Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Meeting. Uh, today we're going to be joined by Henry. Uh, so I'm going to go in and get him out, and we'll see where he wants to take us today. Uh, as always, let me know where you guys are tuning in from this morning. Good morning, Henry. Hi, handsome. Let me know where you guys are tuning in from today. Uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, we'd love to answer them this morning. Come on, Henry, let's go for a walk. And for those of you that haven't been to the center, Henry has a cute little porky patio that he we opened during the day so he can hang out outside. Uh, sometimes he needs some encouragement to go out. <laughs> what? Come on, let's go. Let me clear some of your brows out. Can't see some. Lots of brows that he got last night. Henry. Uh, so, uh, a lot of oaks and raspberries and stuff like that. Come on, let's go. What? Henry, what is it? You want to just hang out in here today? Good morning, Cindy. Hi, Mom. <laughs> You want some sweet potato? He's like, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> oh, Henry. Uh, so Henry is our North American porcupine ambassador that many of you guys may have already met. We absolutely adore him. Uh, so he's often on one of these. He actually has his own cameo, which is pretty cool. Um, we just set one up for him, and he's done a dozen or 20 um, cameo visits, which is pretty cool. So we can actually sign up through our community engagement specialist. If you'd like to have Henry on cameo, we'll give a couple minutes with him and it's a, um, a little message that we can put along in there, more or less. Uh, good morning, Chuck from Rhode Island. Good morning, Paul from Chicopee. Good morning, Donna. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, he knows it's a bit of a dreary day today. It was raining, and Henry doesn't necessarily like to go out in the rain. So it's a little, a little bit chilly today. Um, so it's a day where he wants to hunker down a little bit. <laughs> uh, good morning, Kim. Good morning, Robin from Freeport. Good morning, John. Good morning, Ellen. He does have the absolute cutest face. Listen to those nibbles. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, Henry. You're so cute. Yep. You can also see that he poops a lot as a little herbivore. <laughs> He just got a deep clean two days ago, and then we pick up his poo pretty much every day. And this is just from one day on this one platform. Bud. <laughs> you gonna come down now? Um, so, Henry is non releasable because he's imprinted on heat. Don't fall. Come on. Let's go. Let's go for a walk. Good boy, Henry. You can see those really long claws that he has. He has this little marble slate in his enclosure. Because Henry does not enjoy the heat so much. Oh, nice shake. Let's go for a walk. Let's go. Hey, come on. Let's go. Good boy, Henry. walk this morning. <laughs> uh, Paul is easily most... Yeah, they are. Um, so they're completely vegan, actually. Um, so he... They sometimes will refer to pork pines as like the little hippies of the forest. Um, they really just want to eat and sleep. <laughs> Clearly, Henry is in the mood to more sleep today. He's <laughs> kind of strolling along, not super into anything. 
You can nibble on that. That's okay. Hi, Maeve. Good morning. Oh, there she is. She's right in the front. Oops. Come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah, so during the summertime, um, so he normally will be eating um, different types of oaks in the wild. They would like sugar maple. We unfortunately don't have any sugar maple here on site. Um, he would enjoy that. He really likes black birch. Um, he really likes, uh, quaking aspen. Um, what else does he really like? And some, like, random things that he will get in the mood for. Uh, so we have, unfortunately, some knotweed, which is invasive, growing on site. Um, and he'll nibble on that a little bit. Um, we'll see in a second. He really enjoys the hostas, <laughs> as you guys might have saw the other day. And he had him on video. Where are you going? And during, and right now he's actually eating some of his more wintery foods. During the winter he'll eat hemlocks and pines. Um, Henry's favorite seasons are, hey look, pasta. You want to eat it? What do you think? Not in the mood today? Okay, we can keep walking. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, I smell the little girl that lives here. <laughs> what is it, Henry? <laughs> Such a silly boy. I can smell the little girl. Um, but yeah, so he normally would only eat hemlock and pine during the wintertime. Um, but he's taken a liking to it lately, so we've been giving him a little bit of it. Um, fall and winter time are really his favorite seasons because he'll get all the sweet potatoes and squashes and pumpkins in the fall time. And then right after the holidays, actually, people donate their organic Christmas trees to us, which we enjoy. Henry loves. Um, it, raptors will get them in their enclosures as well as Good Morning Perry as environmental enrichment, but Henry really likes to munch on them. Um, so in a single winter, he can eat 15 to 30 Christmas trees, depending on his mood. <laughs> um, when he's super hungry, he can devour a full Christmas tree in a day or two, um, turning a full tree into literally a, a stripped toothpick, which is pretty cool. Uh, good morning! Paul, good morning, Ryan, good morning, Kara, good morning, Kyle and Camden from Dover. Chuck, I'm glad the audio is better. Um, I am using my phone today. Um, I believe Katie's going to not use hers as much anymore and try to use her laptop um, to hopefully fix that issue. <laughs> so hopefully we don't have any more audio issues. <laughs> Yeah, the deer really like the hostas. Henry really likes the hostas. <laughs> you know, for he would eat the oak and the stuff he would normally be eating in the wild. Not so much ornamentals and invasives and non-natives, but, you know, he wants what he wants. So, we want, just let him eat it. <laughs> A chef, maybe that is where your wife's hostas went. Um, pork fine deer, you name it. Morning, too. What is it, Henry? Here, let's go this way. Wanna go down on the trail? Nope. Okay. <laughs> here, Henry. You want, want a treat? Come here. Henry. Want an acorn? Henry. Come here. <gasps> You're so sleepy today. Take it with your paws. Don't bite me. Thank you. Good boy, Henry. <laughs> oh, that wasn't a good one. Henry is a bit of an uh, acorn concierge to tell pretty quickly if it's good or not. And that was not a good one, apparently. Sorry, bud. Here, I'll give you another treat so you can sit here for a minute. I know. 
As you can see this on two legs right now, this is not a normal porcupine behavior. Um, Henry, <laughs> want that? Good boy. So Henry, like I started to mention earlier, is fully imprinted on humans. Um, so he has no fear of humans anymore, clearly. <laughs> he should be, show have his tur back turned to us I and mean, showing all those quills. And right now he's eating a piece of squash. Um, you can see on his head all this white right here. And then all back here as well. Sorry, bud. It's stop. <laughs> And then all those quills on his tail as well. Um, so he has 30,000 quills on his whole body. Um, the only place he doesn't have them, he is a bit of a food snob, you're right, Kara. <laughs> um, so he has 30,000 there all over his body besides his belly. Um, they are actually just modified hairs. Um, so they do have kind of like a microscopic barb on the end of them. Um, so each one of those little quills, um, he can raise them and lower them. It's actually the same way we get goosebumps. Um, so you can see right now they are flat. That's why I'm not getting pricked. Um, he <laughs> will raise them and lower them um, with that ligament. And of course, he is nocturnal, so he's walking around the forest floor. He doesn't want to lose his quills as he's walking around at night. Um, which is why he can control them. Uh, they are his natural defense, as I mentioned. They are pretty much little hippies just wanting to eat and sleep and be left alone. Um, so they're not attacking anything. Um, if you ever heard anyone say that their dog got attacked by a porcupine, um, that is simply not true. Um, so they don't want to lose those quills. Those quills are made of the same stuff our hair and our fingernails are made of. So and it essentially feels like when we pull one hair out, it doesn't feel great, but we're okay. But imagine if he loses a whole chunk of quills to a predator. He's going to be pretty sore for a while. And he's also going to have a bare spot. Uh, so he doesn't want to lose that natural defense. Um, which is why they are low right now. Because he doesn't want to lose them. Right, Henry? Right now he's just mildly annoyed. <laughs> Um, I imagine dogs smell each other's bums, that's how they greet each other. And that's why we see a lot of dogs getting those quills to the face, is because they smell a porcupine's bum, and you get a bunch of quills. What, Perry? Perry, our peregrine falcon ambassador, is very excited for his breakfast, which he hasn't gotten yet. <laughs> All right, Henry. So cute. And you can see these extra long hairs on the sides of him. Uh, so his are actually as long as most wild porcupines. Uh, he's actually a bit small on a smaller side for a wild porcupine. Um, we do believe that is because of... Hold on. Hold on. Here you go. Good boy. And so those little guard hairs are for sentry use him. So he's walking around the forest floor, he's using that for scents, um, like most nocturnal animals. He doesn't have a great eyesight um, for a nocturnal animal. Uh, so he can see more similar to us, um, which of course isn't great at night. Um, so they are going to get around through their sense of touch and their sense of smell. His little nose. Oh my gosh, Henry. I can't. He's <laughs> so cute. Good morning, Yvette. Good... Jeff, yes, the quills do grow back just like our hairs. Um, but of course, just like our hair, it does take time, so he does not want to lose him because they are his natural defense. Yeah, Chuck, it is a bit of a late breakfast. Um, I had to stop and get a breakfast for Zipper, our corn snake, this morning. So, <laughs> pretty much got that and then went to cut up some snacks for Henry. I'm sure everyone is eating a little bit later today, but they'll be okay. <laughs> and Henry's just getting a special treat. Right, handsome. Oh my gosh. You're so cute. <laughs> and so you can see those really long claws that he has. 
Um, he is an excellent, excellent climber. Um, so Henry came to us because someone found him as a little baby called a porcupine, found at the base of the tree. Um, so like most wild animals, mom will leave their babies alone. And these guys are actually born with all 30,000 of those quills. They're soft when they're born, hardened within about an hour or so. And then after that, they're literally just miniature adults. Um, just an adult the size of a grapefruit, which is pretty dang cute. <laughs> uh, we have a baby right now in our clinic who, oh my gosh. And of course, she's the normal porcupine, so she's does not enjoy human company. Um, it's not about it, but she is very, very cute nonetheless. Um, so Henry was found at the base of a tree. Um, a couple walked by, thought he was orphaned, and then proceeded to bring him home. Um, so Henry was in the stage where he would be learning what he is and how to act like a normal porcupine. Uh, so Henry lost all fear of humans, um, and we believe because he wasn't fed the right diet, he wasn't brought to a wildlife rehabber for about a month and a half or so. And then in that time, he became pretty malnourished, lost all of his fear. And when we admitted him initially as a cl patient into our hospital, we actually... Hey, let's go. I know, I'm going to make you walk. Just sorry. <laughs> when we admitted him as a patient into our hospital, we would open the latch and try to go in there to feed him. And Henry would use those really long claws to open the door for us and be like, Good morning. Oh, what? Oh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, so that's why Henry is with us. He's about five years old now. Um, he's been with us since he was a pork pet, so we're... I'm a pretty great guess on how about how old he is, almost exact. Uh, Paul, he was eating um, a type of squash. Uh, so I have a bag in my pocket that has acorns and sweet potato. Um, some apple, squash, acorns. Would look if he ate the wild stuff. Here. <gasps> What's that? That's black birch. You like black birch. Like, not today, I don't. <laughs> uh, good morning, Oz from Worcester. Chuck, yes, uh, you will see Henry this afternoon. Um, as our usual Friday evening Henry hangout. So, yep, he'll be on with Kristen Lamb, our executive director, later this afternoon as well. He is very cute, Mary Beth, you're right. <laughs> Robin, yeah. <laughs> Hey, you want some pine? What about that? Want that? No? You can't have all junk food. We have to eat something normal today, bud. <laughs> what are you thinking? Yes, that is a black birch. <laughs> favorite treats. That's good. <laughs> yeah, Henry's definitely um, very locally famous ambassador. Arguably probably our most famous um, because of the new cameos. Um, he's by far our most requested ambassador for sure. Um, we do try to accommodate requests for programming. We can't always do that, um, but we do try. Um, and Henry is definitely requested quite often. Um, but we've been trying to give Henry some more love during this quarantine, because now that we're finally able to start doing some programming again, unfortunately we cannot use our mammals. Um, so Henry is getting some love from our staff, as you guys can have seen from all the walks and stuff like that. What do you think, Henry? Because Henry definitely misses seeing everyone. We go eat some real brows? What do you think? We're gonna go in the world. See what this wet. There's dew. Yeah. What do you think? 
No, you're not in the mood today. That's okay. We can sit and have some treats. Come here. He certainly does, Chuck. He most definitely has a personality. <laughs> definitely, depending on his mood, for sure. Um, with the little girl that's been, that was hanging out around, she lives right under our Ed Hall. Um, sometimes she'll hang out under there, and Henry can smell her. And sometimes she'll go over to his enclosure, and so sometimes he gets very interested in just hanging out around his enclosure, trying to smell, um, the scents from the other porcupine. Um, so... This has been the first time that's kind of, um, he's taken an interest in females lately, <laughs> uh, which is the first time we've seen it, um, since he's been with us, so it's been interesting, kind of like an angsty teenager. Right. Like, I just want to eat and sleep. At least it stopped raining, so I'm not too angry about being outside today. <laughs> Right, handsome. So if I can, I might be able to show you. No. Munch, 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 munch. <laughs> and so if, while he's eating, you guys, it's kind of hard to see because his, of course, skin's in the way. I'll have to give him an acorn after this. Uh, so like all rodents, he does have bright orange incisors. Uh, so that's going to help him... Uh, make those front teeth really hard. Um, so it's essentially like rust on metal. Uh, so what it's, it's going to do is the iron in his food gets deposited into his front teeth. Uh, so it's going to come in contact with oxygen, just like rust on metal does, um, and then it's going to make them hard. Um, so he needs those hard incisors to get through nuts and to get through um, bark and stuff like that. Um, that's the characteristic of all rodents. So, porcupines, beavers, squirrels, mice, rats, they all have those bright orange incisors. Uh, welcome Lori from Connecticut. <laughs> Carrie's about the teenage years now. What age do they start breeding? Let's walk, bud. Yeah, so he's definitely getting there, um... So the females, so the youngsters will, depending on if they're male or female, will stay around with mom a bit longer. Um, the, I believe it's the males will stay an extra um, season with mom where the girls will go off on their own. Um, so he, the, the moms will go off, or the boys will go out finally on their own at about two, I believe it is. Um, so he's definitely getting to te about teenage years. <laughs> um, we would have expected that probably a year or so ago, um, or two. Um, but because we do have the fe the wild female that's been hanging now, it's kind of just brought out the teenage her and Henry. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Brenda. He is so cute, right? <laughs> what? Like, um, I just want a sweet potato. I don't really want to go for work for my food. What'd you find? An acorn? Yeah. Um, he's about five. We're hoping to have him, um, as long as the one down at the Museum of Science, who just turned 32 a couple months ago, so... We have high expectations for you, Henry. <laughs> I know, I'm making you walk. You could go eat the hastas if you could come this way, bud. I just want to mark everything. That's all I really want to do. <laughs> Where are you going? Oh, Henry. You don't like to eat ferns. I know you don't. You just want to pee on them. Nice, bud. <laughs> uh, so he has a little scent gland on his belly. Uh, if you guys have ever had the chance to be able to come see 
Henry in at the center in his enclosure. You'll see a lot of times there's black stuff um, on the walls and stuff, and that is from the scent gland that is on his belly. Um, so he will mark things and has a very distinct odor nonetheless, um, especially when it, during the summertime here at the center when we have to use our own cars um, if we have a lot of programs going on. You can definitely tell when Henry has been in our cars for quite some time. <laughs> definitely a couple weeks or so before the smell kind of goes away. Very distinct. <laughs> Chuck, will Henry eat coconut? Um, I'm not sure. He may. He we So we do try to mostly only feed them um, native foods. Um, the... Occasionally, Henry will get a banana, um, which he really likes, but of course that is not native to Maine, so we don't offer it to him very often at all. Um, so maybe once every like a year every, or every couple months. Um, so not very often. Um, I don't think he's ever been offered coconut. Um, I think Bertram or Raven would probably eat, the co- eat coconut. We haven't found anything that he will not eat, so... Uh, but we do try to stick to natives as much as possible. Uh, Paul, when are you going to come in the... Um, so do you mean if, like, when we're going to start programs again? Because um, we have slowly started to start our programs, Paul. Um, only one or two a week off-site, but we do also have our quarantine tours going on, um, where you can book... What about this? Want some of that? Where you can book a private tour with us, um, and we'll bring a amb- ambassador or two out. Where are you going? Um, Henry will never be able to go f- out into the wild, um, because he is non-releasable. Good morning, Sue. Henry, where are we going? I don't know. You're so good. I know you want some treats. Good to know, Chuck. I didn't know that. Um. Yeah, we <laughs> just try. It. He really does enjoys his bananas, but they're not probably the best for him. <laughs> but he loves them. Henry, what do you think? You don't want to eat the beach, bud. Uh, so all this, we have a lot of American beach on site, um, which during the early spring, he it's the only thing he'll eat. Um, but however, once it gets a little bit later into the summer, it gets like a waxy coating to it. And so after it starts to get waxy, he will not touch it. Um, so he'll eat that for the first about a month or so. Here. Henry. There you go. Good boy, Henry. Uh, Paul, we are in Cape Nettick, Maine, um, so uh, near York. Um, however, we are not currently open for self-guided tours. Um, we're open for animal admissions into our hospital and then the um, pre-booked quarantine tours. Um, we're hoping by the end of the summer we'll be able to fully open up again, um, depending on how this pandemic comes out, um, and then hopefully you can see all that open area over there, that's our brand new building, which we're really excited about, um, hopefully be able to be in there and have our grand opening, um, in October, hopefully, um, of course with the pandemic, some stuff has gotten pushed back, um, but we're gonna have a expanded medical clinic, a lot of the medical tools that we really desperately need to have on site um, that we don't have. When we have patients or ambassadors that have to get like an x-ray or something like that, they have to go an hour and a half round trip down to the Hamptons um, to our vet, Dr. John Means. Um, So it's really stressful for a wild animal. Um, So we're hoping to have that. um, And then our nature center so all of our reptiles can actually be on display uh so we're in the classrooms and conference center and we're going to be able to have housing for our interns which we have received from all over the 
country. Um, so we host about 30 interns a year, typically, um, when we're not in a pandemic. Um, but we're really excited to be able to offer them that housing so that we, because right now, like our medical clinic apprentices who are with us for 10, 11 months, um, we can at least, um, we have donors that do house them if they do need housing. Um, but we just don't have, um, really good housing for our interns because they're only with us really 12 weeks. Uh, so we're really excited to have all those stuff once we are in our brand new facility. Oh, you're welcome, Paul. Uh, good morning, Penelope and Greenbelt Hiker. Beach have nuts. Wonder if he would eat beach nuts when they arrive. I don't know. I don't know if he's ever actually been offered a beach nut. Um, he we've only ever seen him eat the new leaves. Um, so like the pine trees in particular and the hemlock trees, he will literally strip the bark off of it. Um, but not so much with a lot, of, like the maples or oaks or anything like that. Uh, so we may, I'm not really sure. Um, so I'm going to let him finish this little piece up, um, and then we're going to go back to his enclosure, uh, just so everyone, because everyone else wants to eat breakfast, as you can, might be able to hear Bertram yelling because he wants his breakfast. Um, so if you guys have any last questions, I can certainly answer them. Um, otherwise, I'm going to let Henry munch on the rest of his food, and then we're going to go feed everyone. Right, Henry. Um, he will be back this afternoon as well. Uh, with Chris and Lamb, our executive director. Munch, 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 munch. You're welcome, Chuck. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> Aww. Henry. You got it? Alright. Oh, you're welcome, Robin. Um, so thank you guys so much, as always, for tuning in. Um, we will be back tomorrow, I believe, with Ophelia, our Virginia opossum. Um, so have a great day, everyone. Um, he was eating some squash and sweet potato and acorns and apples. <laughs> um, Brenda, he could hopefully live to be in his 30s, the one in the Museum of Science in Boston just turned 32. Uh, so he's only about five years old, so we're hoping to have him for a really, really long time. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Dawn and Brenda. Yeah, <laughs> his some of his favorite treats. Um, and then we're gonna, once he's back in his enclosure, I'll cut some oak and some other natural grass for him, which he doesn't enjoy nearly as much as the sweet potato and other treats, but... Oh, you're welcome, Oz and Yvette and Paul. Um, hey, Henry, they all love you. <laughs> As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye, Henry. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>